In this tutorial, we'll cover the user interface of Rhino 6. Um, Rhino, like most 3D software, is divided into a series of drop-down menus. So from the drop-down menu file, you can open files, you can save files. If you build a file on a different 3D software, like 3ds Max or Illustrator or AutoCAD, you can import that file into your Rhino scene. You can also export files into other 3D software. So if you want to export and 3D print, for example, you can export an STL file, or you can export meshes for 3ds Max. Um, you can also edit and undo or redo commands, so you can actually step back and undo commands that you've done and get back to an earlier point. You can cut, copy, and paste objects. You can also select objects by a series of filters, so you can select objects by the geometry type. You can select all the points in a scene or all the curves in a scene. You can also select by um, layer or by color, so if every object is that's orange and you want to select all the orange objects, you can select by color. Um, you can also turn on visibility. You can hide and show objects. So if you're working with a scene that has a lot of objects and you want to work only on one particular object, you can hide all of the others. And then when you're done, you can then show all the objects. You can also group objects um, and join, explode, trim, split objects. Um, under view, you can actually change the um, view that you're looking at the object. So you can change it from top view to bottom view or even use some two-point perspective and isometric views. You can also set the construction plane, um, which is the plane on which you build objects, um, change the camera, or even change the display type. So looking at the objects and modeling in wireframe versus rendered or ghosted. The curve and surface and solid and mesh tool um, dropdowns um, are different ways of creating objects. So curve allows you to create two-dimensional objects, which can be three-dimensional, but are curves. So polylines, lines, splines, even some shapes like circles, arcs, parabolas can all be created under the curve dropdown. You can also edit lines, like you can extend curves or you can fill it two curves together with a radius or chamfer curves into a sharp corner or offset curves and blend curves. You can um, also create surface types, so different surfaces like lofting or extrusions. You can also make curves, uh, surfaces out of a series of curves or using corner points to define the surface. Um, and then you can also edit surfaces just like curves, so extending surfaces, filleting surfaces, offsetting surfaces. Um, under solid, you can create three-dimensional objects like boxes, spheres, cylinders, um, and you can also Boolean objects. So you can cut um, one object out of another using difference, or you can combine two objects using union, or find the intersection of objects um, using the intersection option. You can uh, create different meshes under mesh. Under dimension, you can actually dimension your object. So include annotation for length, width, height, or even angles. Uh, between objects, for example. You can also create text or hatch patterns and use leaders to make notes on drawings. Uh, uh, Make2D allows you to take a three-dimensional object and turn it into a two-dimensional drawing. You can transform objects. Uh, you can do basic things like move, copy, rotate, or scale an object. You can scale an object in three dimensions or only two or even only one dimension. You can also align objects or orient them to other objects or even twist, bend, and use some modifiers on objects. Um, there are also more, more advanced tools like Rhino scripting or Grasshopper, which we'll cover later, can be located uh, found here. You can analyze objects for their area or their length or their width um, and the curvature of an object. You can render objects. And then you can um, decide which panels you want to see over here on the right. So anything with a checkbox is displayed on the right over here. You can turn on and off panels by selecting them within this dropdown. Um, the next thing is the command line. So this is where you type in commands. Once you're really familiar with Rhino, you'll probably um, use a lot of shortcuts. So L for line, for example. Um, and if you start typing, um, within this window, it'll show you all of the commands that start with LI, for example. Um, and that's a really good, fast way of working in Rhino. Rhino also has uh, the same tools that you find up here are located under these tabs. So for example, if I go under standard tab, I can create new files or save files. Um, you can also do some other things like moving and zooming. 
um, within this uh, tab. Um, and then if you select some of these like curves, you'll see the tools over here on the left change. So the tools over here correspond to whatever tab you currently have selected. Um, your viewports are by default divided into top, perspective, front, and right viewport. If you want to work in just one viewport, you can double click on that name and it will maximize that viewport. If you double click again, it will minimize it and you can work in all four viewports simultaneously. So you can start moving an object here and then move over here and move it here. Um, so it really depends on how you want to work. Usually when I'm modeling, I'll work in the perspective viewport, but when I'm making lights and cameras or even some line um, curve geometry, I'll work in the four viewports, but it's really up to you and, and based on how you like to work. On the right, we have different panels. We have the properties panel, which is where you can rename objects. Um, also you can find out information about an object like what color it is, the line weight, the line type. Um, under layers you can divide objects into different layers. <clears throat> so I tend to put all of my walls in one layer, all the windows in another layer, um, and then you can change the colors. You can actually turn on and off layers and if you right click you can make it the current layer. You can also rename that layer right here. Um, below the viewports here we have the object snaps so you can um, change how your lines or objects are snapping to each other. To turn that on and off you can hit this O snap button here. If I turn it off it won't my geometry won't snap to any geometry. If I turn it on it'll snap to whatever is checked within these windows. Um, you can also turn your grid on and off, the grid snaps. Um, gumball is how you move and rotate and scale objects visually and we'll talk about that later. Um, if you select the arrow down next to one of the viewport names, you can change the display option for that particular viewport. So right now it's in wireframe, but you can render all the objects in that viewport as shaded or ghosted or x-ray. And so you can actually have different view display options depending on which viewport you're in. Um, you can also set the view and change that particular viewport to one of these other options. And if you want to change properties of the viewport, you can change those down here.